Hello guys and welcome to the third episode of the SketchUp plugins review series. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to another three completely free plugins. That said, I don't want to waste your time. Let's get right into it. Today's first extension is Pushline by Dennis B. Even though it's advertised as a push-pull tool for edges, it's actually a very simple tool for extruding edges by vector. It works like this. After selecting an edge, you activate the tool, click on the edge you've selected and drag. You can lock the direction on the world axis by pressing the arrow keys on the keyboard or choosing whatever direction you want. Like all other tools in SketchUp, typing the measurement value in the value box here also works. It works equally well if you select a curve instead of an edge or if you select multiple edges, even if they're not connected. Another cool thing is that it can work even if you activate the tool before selecting an edge. You just click on the middle point and drag. You can also click and drag from just a point and it will extrude all edges connected to that point, like this. It's a very simple but extremely practical tool. I especially like the fact it comes with this toolbar so you won't lose time searching for it in the drop down menus. Now let's talk about the second plugin of the week and it's Windor by Francis. It's a nice little plugin that allows you to easily create fully customizable windows and doors in just a couple of clicks. To create a new window, you just need to go into Extensions, Windor, and select create single window or door. This first option, create multiple connected windows and doors, is essentially just a way to create more than one window or door, one after the other. You practically won't need it. So when you click here, a dialog box appears that asks you if you want a window or door. And then it lets you select all the dimension parameters that you might want to change. If I select the window option, for example, I'll get the options uh, to change the glass thickness, frame width and depth, uh, number of millions and transoms, uh, their spacing and a bunch more. You'll get the hang of it. When you're done with the input of parameters, this plugin creates a window in your component tray here and you can add it to your scene like you do with any other component. Every one of these windows or doors will also cut an opening in a face, as you can see. You can also edit the name of it if you like and you can even edit the component itself by right clicking on it and clicking on the context menu item edit window. This will open again the dialog box where you can adjust all the parameter entries uh, until you have the window configuration you want. You can create as many windows or doors uh, as you like. Uh, they're just gonna be added to your component tray for you to add to the scene whatever you need to. Moving on, the third and last extension of the video is CLF Loose to Groups by Chris Fulmer. This plugin simply turns loose geometry into groups. You run the script from Extensions, Chris Fulmer Tools, Loose Geometry to Groups. If you have geometry selected, it will work on the selection, but if nothing is selected, it will work on all loose geometry. It will not group components or existing groups. I use this often in combination with this another plugin, and this one is the bonus plugin of the week, the Groups to Components by ThumbTown. This plugin simply converts all selected groups to components. You run it from the extension menu, Convert Groups to Components. The group's name is transferred to the component's definition's name. This script, like the last one, will work on the selection, but if nothing is selected, it will work on all the groups in the scene. I can think of numerous uses for these last two plugins, uh, but I use them mostly when I want different loose geometry to become all instances of the same component, so that I can change its geometry only once and have the other change as well. I just have to make this last step to achieve this result. Select all and replace selected. So this is it for our third episode. You can find the link for the other episodes in the description. If you want to know how to install a plugin into SketchUp, go watch the first one. 
Let me know in the comments which one of the three extensions I showed you today is your favorite one. And I have an announcement uh, for my Blender viewers out there. I need to inform you that unfortunately, because of the way YouTube algorithm works, I'll be moving all my Blender related videos to a new channel. Find the link for it in the description if you want to continue to follow Blender content from me in the future. And all you SketchUp lovers, do tell me if you want to see more of this plugin reviews videos. And if you want to give me a helping hand, share this video with your friends. Don't forget to hit like before you go and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.